Do they grow through concrete? I would assume not. I haven't ever messed with the concrete, and I can't imagine how much concrete it must be to get there. But um, I shouldn't need concrete because, like, I have something like 13, 14 boxes of nails we can bring. Um, we'll be cutting down trees constantly. So I shouldn't have to worry about planks at all. Yeah, so I could effectively make an artificial road. Alright, before we drive anywhere, I'm just going to do a circle around the building, see if any hordes walked into the area. Uh, any zombies we see near the building we're using as our, you know, forward base, whatever you want to call it, they have to go. That's that's how we keep ourselves safe. We just don't let any zombies anywhere near where we live. Because that way when they walk in, they'll usually be out on the fringes, so I don't have to worry about them as much. But if I see any zombies from here, they die. Yep, so these zombies die because they are invisible line of sight of our base. Our base is not allowed to be seen. All who see must perish. Uh, Oko's is saying, helicopter, while I'm leaving my house, time to get out of town. Yep. Uh, we have probably a good while till our next helicopter because we had, um, I think our helicopter was what, like three days ago? Something like that, four days ago. And so we get two, three a month. All right, looks good. So let's take our, uh, our truck, and we're just going to keep going. Like, I'm not going to go off to the side roads right now. We're just going to go straight down the main road until um, we see that, like, one ritzy neighborhood. Um, I probably will deviate for the ritzy neighborhood because there's a really good chance that's where we'll find a generator. So tomorrow we have thick fog, which works out because, like I said, we were already looking at the point that I'm going to probably need to restock on food tomorrow. So that just means tomorrow we head back, you know, work on the base a little or whatever while it's foggy, restock our food, harvest whatever needs harvest, planting whatever needs planting, that kind of thing. Once we get to the point that we're nowhere near our base, I won't have a problem with, like, moving up, honking our horn, killing what shows up, moving up, honking our horn, killing what shows up. I was debating something. We'll just, we'll just keep clearing forward. I don't get why Rosewood feels so quiet. Like I said, it could be that we've been, you know, been playing for almost a year's worth of time in game. That maybe the just between migration and distribution and all that, there's just zombies and giant hordes wandering the woods kind of thing now.
Oh, so by default, a project zomboid day is one hour. As, you know, not counting you sleeping or fast forwarding or anything else. Just normally one hour. Um, you can adjust it. A lot of people do adjust it to two hours. I personally don't like doing that. Um, when you do change the speed of a day, it changes the speed of everything in the game. Like how fast you get hungry, how fast you get thirsty, how fast you get sleepy. Um, it changes how long the helicopter stays around for. It uh, changes how long it takes to read books. So keep in mind, if you do extend like how long a day lasts, like how long it takes to read a book will increase proportionally to how long you make the day longer. So if I were to say, you know what, four hour days, you just don't want to deal with sleep at all. All right, that's fine. Books will now be four times as long to read. And generally speaking, the game is balanced primarily around one hour days. I like everything, you can go in the sandbox and change all the settings you'd like. Like there's no wrong answer how to play. It's just gotta be aware of those implications. Um, injuries will take four times as long to heal, so if you take an injury, have fun. It's going to be a long time. Remember when it was hard to fight zombies? When we were all weak and frail and had no combat skills? And you know, we get tired of, we get tired of like walking in a stiff breeze. Gotcha, Cog. No problem. I mean, that that is how your start... Like, even if you go and you get the start that's like... You're going for, like, the super Chad thing where, you know, your character is, like... 9, 10 strength, a whole bunch of fitness... Okay, sure, you just destroyed the door and then you... Noped out. Cool. It's like, even if you do that, because your combat skills are still, like, super low... You still have to fight and hit... Get lots of hits in. Sorry. So this is one of the things that, you know, very much is a thing you worry about and deal with. Alright. So we've cleared out all the zombies that are behind the building. I say as apparently another group of zombies is like, oh hey, there's this big open spot, let's just go over here. That's going to happen a lot. Okay. Kill them, kill the zombies that are by our vehicle, and they'll go back to clearing. It 
it probably did that way we could um, recover stamina in the car while we're moving to the next location versus just continuing to pace around in the woods and all that. This feels more like 16x pop. This is what I'm familiar with. Just walking like one block and having like 200 zombies to kill. That's the 16 pop I know. Those other ones were just like 10 zombies here and they're like, what? what is this? What is this normal population garbage? This isn't what we signed up. We signed up to just deal with absurd numbers. Uh, let's not walk up into four of them. Considering how many there are that were just one chapping them and still being backed up the highway. Yep, here we go. Where we're just endlessly picking up more and more zombies. Until we're pushed the whole way out of town. And then we kill them all. And then we return to our vehicle going, okay, well at least that's done. And then there's another 50 just hanging out at our truck. And we go, well crap. And then we fight into the wee hours of the night. Just trying to stay alive. This, this is the Project Zomboid I know. It's just river or rosewood, not riverside. Rosewood's just like you know. Let's just have all our zombies be like downtown. And I do hear one behind me. And like always, when you pull these kinds of hordes, you end up with two waves. I think it's just a matter of like which ones are the fast shamblers, which ones are the regular shamblers. That the fast shamblers end up keeping up with you and the regular shamblers just fall behind. And the reason why we have that blackness behind us is I have not turned around in long enough that we haven't seen what's over there. So our character has no idea. But it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. With keen hearing, I can see enough behind me that as long as I don't like back up in between groups, I can't maneuver around them. It's a non-issue. Now if I turn, and we see it. Cool. So that was, um, I think we had four hordes we pulled there. There was, uh, there was one ahead, there was one off right, there was one off left, and then while we were backing up, we pulled, like, another one off left. 
So just like that, you know, somewhere between 40 and 80, well, probably more like 40 and 60 zombies were just killed off the map. And the town gets a little quieter. There's the metal bar. I was wondering if I was going to actually notice it. And I do see the group over here. I do want to kill them, but my first priority is to rover, uh, recover the truck. Exit is always first. The truck is my ride. And it's a near certainty that truck is going to have a bunch of zombies around it. That happens pretty much any time you do that. Yeah, so I believe my plan is to drive down this main road and then zigzag to this road to look for the generator. Because of the generator, then I can hook up the power to the gas station. And then by having power at the gas station, we can refuel the generator and the truck and all that. And then I don't have any qualms around driving the truck around all over the place because we can just top off anywhere. Yep, exactly. We're already within a block of it. Just like that, truck is clear. Oh, the bookstore. Normally I'm always excited for bookstores, but we basically have all the books, so you know. That building is nothing but full of fuel for us. Fuel that I don't particularly need either. And I know that one has a hunting knife. There's a good chance we'll never find it. It's okay. We have plenty. I'll catch up and chat in just a minute. It is the one downside of this phase of the thing where we're just like concentrated, like just killing zombie after zombie. Uh, you do have to go focus mode a whole lot, and while you're doing that, it does come at the detriment of being able to focus on chat. Okay. Uh, I can't kill anyone says, I just killed 300 zombies at Rosewood, at the inner hoarder in me is telling me check all the bodies. Uh, good luck to you. I have I have given up checking the bodies a long time ago. The way I deal with checking the bodies is I just walk over and if I see something that suits my fancy, I grab it. Otherwise, we just ignore it. Unless it's something like I see a you know, zombie walking around with a machete or a katana or something specifically that I'm like, ooh. 
Then we grab that. Like I used to take all those value radios. I'm not grabbing the nightsticks anymore because I, I have dozens of those. Um, like we're getting them way fast I could ever possibly use them. There, that's what I'm used to seeing. We get back to our vehicle and go, oh, it's just completely overrun with zombies. Great. Actually, we're not going to be at all recovered, so let's just push in here, keep using the knife. Don't worry about switching. That way we get two, three hit kills versus using the um, machete for like two kills and then spending the rest of time having like four and five tap zombies. We must be getting close to sleep with how fast we're getting back to Martyr Exerted. I want to bet we'll see Drowsy any second now. Catch up the chat here in a minute. Yeah, so as you can see, when it comes to this kind of fighting, we're trying our best to keep them lined up. Do a little bit of side by side. If you're low and nimble, that can still get you killed really easily. But the idea is to keep them mostly in a straight line to you. Because as long as you're doing that, you're only like it's kind of like you're fighting one at a time, again and again and again. Versus they're side by side, it's kind of like you're fighting three on one type deal. Lunch line strat is even better if you have multi hit on. Um, when you're saying the lunch line strat, are you talking about where you have like three, four of them in range at the same time? Because I would argue it's better when you're talking about stamina efficiency and like damage output. I would say it's worse in the sense it's very easy to um, get yourself in trouble because you'll think all three of them are kind of. Oh, what you're doing? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the comments I've had with multi and this is coming from someone who like up until multiplayer was announced as coming, I I played multi hit. I only switched off multi hit because I knew a lot of the other people in the community don't run multi hit. And the way I looked at it is okay, if I'm going to be joining someone else's server and they don't play multi hit, like I'm not going to try and like bully them into playing. Like if they're hosting the server, I will play on their terms kind of thing. But um, I, I do worry that multi-hit gets you in bad habits, as it were. Because you'll try and go for those swings when there's two and three zombies in a row on you. And one will be ever so slightly out. It's just more easy to get the... Um, like, where you have that angle, and it's like, okay, I can hit where I'm facing this way. I can hit a zombie that's over... Like, if I'm facing this way, I can hit a zombie that's over here, but not there. And so you get in the habit like of being more off-target very easily to miss them. Because you'll be trying to like aim in the middle of the group to hit all of them, and you might be just a little too far off from one of the sides. And then the zombies, you know, just overwhelm you. So like in some ways it makes you feel great because you're just mowing down zombies, and there is the safety it does offer you by the fact you're hitting multiple zombies. It's just very easy to go for a swing you really shouldn't go for. Because it just makes you feel safe doing it. All right, and that's the last of the food we have on us. Which is why we were kind of like pushing so hard as I do know we are going to be forced to uh, go back to Ekron to resupply and all that good stuff. 
So there's that. That said, we've killed a hell of a lot of zombies today. And if you play multi hit, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just to be careful to not get yourself... To, basically, you get greedy on your hits is what gets you in trouble with multi hit. You think, I can hit all of these, and you're trying to squeeze in hits or you get more and more in there. And ultimately, sooner or later, you overestimate what you can get in one hit so far as the, uh, the cone. And then suddenly bad things happen. Oh, if you play on survivor mode, it's turned on. Otherwise, you can go to sandbox setting. It's just a little toggle. Basically, what multi-hit is, is some weapons, when I say some, it's actually like most weapons. Um, I can hit more than one zombie at a time. I personally, I like the idea of multi-hit, but the current implementation to me feels just too strong, because it hits all the zombies for, like, full if not most damage, like, most if not full damage. I don't know the exact actual math, but you'll sit there and you just take, like, an axe and wipe out a group of zombies in one hit kind of thing. Um, and for me, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm down for you staggering, stunning, bumping, whatever... All the zombies with like a big old sledgehammer or an axe or a baseball bat, like something, something that you can get a lot of leverage behind. I'm like, all right, I'm cool with you. Hit that first zombie, and you rail that zombie with the full damage. Awesome. The second and third zombie in the group, they should get hit with for fairly negligible amount of damage, but you know you stagger them, so it's still really useful. It still gives you that breathing room you need to keep fighting. But right now it just does like full damage to all of them. Um, I also feel like how much you can multi-hit should vary a lot by weapon. Like, I could see I could see the crowbar, I hit a zombie and I do a lot of damage, but then the second zombie I do negligible damage. But like the idea is I've knocked the first zombie into the second zombie. So it does like bump the zombie back kind of thing. So you're not really hurting the zombie so much as stunning it. I'm okay with that idea. Uh, the ones that I really have a problem with is like when you get like the wood mallet and you hit two or three zombies for full damage, you're like it's a wood mallet. Like anyone who's swung a wood mallet, they're not they're not like you don't get the best leverage on a wood mallet. They're not like I'm trying to hit as hard as possible type tools. The reason you use a wood mallet is because it's not as as dense and hard as a metal thing. You're not gonna chip and bang on stuff. You use a wood mallet for that kind of stuff where you would rather the wood mallet take a little bit of damage, if necessary, than whatever you're banging on with said wood mallet. It's kind of the same idea of what you'd use a rubber mallet. It's just a step between rubber and metal. So, to me, if I smack a zombie with a wood mallet, I'm like, yeah, that, that would hurt. Like, sure, it's, it's going to be nowhere near as good as, like, a claw hammer. But, you know, it, it'd do some damage. You're sure as heck not hitting three zombies for appreciable damage in one swing with it. There's just not enough leverage or momentum to make that make sense. So like for me, I, I wish there was a multi-hit light setting. Where you get multi-hit, you do hit multiple zombies, you don't get full damage on all three zombies. Like the first zombie you hit, you get full damage. Cool. But all the others shouldn't... It should be like if I bumped a zombie into another zombie, it should get like, oh, you bruised it a little, you gave it a little scratch. But that's about it. And I could I could even accept that like, maybe that's something that makes katanas special. Or like one of the other weapons is that. The shovel? I would say shovel should multi-hit. Like first first zombie takes full damage. Second and third zombie, again, a significant amount of damage reduction, but you'd knock them. Oh, the shove? Uh... I could see being allowed to shove two zombies. Like, more than two makes no sense because you have two hands, 
it's not like you can shove three zombies simultaneously with that. Now, if they did make multi-hit where I shove the zombie and then the zombie I push knocks the zombie back behind that zombie, that's a different story, but that's not how multi-hit mechanically works. Right. And that's the thing, like, if we're talking behind, that, that, that would make sense to me. It's just that's not how multi-hit mechanically works. It's more like what's horizontal to you. Algo says, I have run far enough. It's time to reclaim my house. The battle for Mordro base begins now. Yup. We are going to drive slow because I have dumped a lot of bodies in the road here. And we've already rolled this truck once. And while I do have a backup vehicle ready and rocket ready to rock and roll, I prefer not use it until I need it. And then as these bodies decay, I'll be able to um drive quickly between locations easily. See, because like right now we want to slow it down because we got a bunch of bodies all over the road. And once we're past it, we can speed up a little. And part of the reason we're getting so sleepy early, even though you'll remember I have the wakeful trait, um, it's every time you hit a zombie, it does put like a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of endurance penalty against you. So your character, as you're fighting, is getting sleeper and weaker and all that. Hey! A derp star said, hello, I'm new to the game. Any useful information? By the way, I love it. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is before we go anywhere, stop, hit escape. Um, and I'm going to close this real fast. And you're going to want to go to Options. And you're going to want to go to Display. Now, you might notice different organization in your display because I am playing on the unstable um, unstable beta. But the name of the options are the same. You'll just have to look in different places for them so far as vertically in this list. But the things I would recommend is, by default, this ISO cursor visibility, I believe, is at 50%. Just in case you do one at 50, and not, uh, 50 or 75%. I can show you what that is in a minute. Um, there's show mouse cursor while aiming. Uh, this is something that some people like, some people don't like. It's a preference thing. But what it is is when you hold the right mouse button, like you got your crowbar or whatever ready, it makes it so your mouse doesn't disappear when you do that, because normally it does. Uh, because I will say is if you're in a group of zombies and you're fighting and you lose track of your mouse, you're probably dead. But the big, big one here is this aim outline. By default, is on ranged weapon. I highly encourage you put it onto any weapon. And I can show you what that is here in a minute as well. Um, and then the last one is you'll see this blood decals setting. So if you end up playing the game for a while and you notice your frame rate starts kind of getting not great, uh, especially if you're dealing with higher zombie pops or you're playing on the same map for a long time, what this is is every time you kill a zombie, it puts a little blood splatter on the wall and the floor and whatnot. And, you know, it's it's kind of cool because you'd be like, yeah, I had a I had a ridiculous fight there. That's why there's all this blood everywhere because we killed a bunch of zombies here. The problem is those blood splats never go away. And as you kill more and more and more zombies, eventually it will become a performance problem. So if you'd run into that, this is one thing you can change to help with that. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop out of my truck real fast. Is... If you see the circle with this line, that's the ISO cursor. That's the thing we were turning up the visibility on or making sure it's up. Now you'll notice it's about the same height as our character or a zombie. So that's actually what you're aiming at is that bar with the circle, not your mouse pointer. So like if I put it like right here, you'll notice my character is kind of looking past the mouse, not at it. 
So that's just something to be, you know, noting that this is where you're actually aiming. Another thing is if a zombie is like right here where you see the uh, the bar, I'm going to aim back here somewhere. You don't aim directly at the zombie. No need for that. If you aim too close to your character, it's really easy to actually do this kind of stuff where you flip around while you're trying to fight. And it's just basically you overcorrecting when you're trying to reposition and all that. So it is good to have it just past what you're you're fighting. Oh, and if you hop into a car and you use Shift W and Shift S, there is cruise control. Um, if you don't want to wrap yourself around a tree, cruise control is your friend. Uh, and you, you really want to have that turned on. And if we can find a zombie real fast, I'll show you a few other things. There is a volunteer in the middle of the road for us. So you'll notice, as I hold my weapon, when the zombie gets in range, a green outline will appear around her. That's what we were turning on. Wait for it. There it is. So yeah, that's what we were turning on. And also a tip is that once you get your nimble over two, notice how long it's taking her to catch me. I'm going to like deliberately get her in range. She can't, she can't grab me. Yeah, we just keep backing up. So that's on the note, that's once you get nimble to or higher. You can also push over zombies, and if you or another zombie is standing on top of it, that zombie is a non-threat, with the exception of zombies that crawl. Um, normally I do a gag where I make a salad and I eat a salad while standing on top of the zombie, just to really deliver the point. I'm, I'm out of food at the moment, so I'm heading back to my base to restock. So just pretend I made a salad and ate it. Regardless... As long as I'm standing on her, she's out of the fight. So I'm going to kill her because she's loud and annoying. Um, generally when you're fighting zombies, when I go to actually... I, I haven't done the exercises on top of zombies because I've definitely had where your character moves their position ever so slightly when they go to go into their exercise. So you go to get all cheeky and start doing some burpees on top of the zombie and your character like shimmies back and it's just enough the zombie starts standing up and you're like, whoa, it's time to back off. Uh, generally speaking, and just assume I am facing the direction of the car but still walking because I am trying to get back home, but um, I generally want to fight the zombies as if they're queuing up for me for an autograph. You know, take their turn, all that stuff. As much as possible, they're not going to fully cooperate, so there's going to be like you know, pairs and zigzagging and all that, that's fine. But mostly you want to try as much as possible to keep them in single file. And that's just because when you hit a zombie, you stun it and all that, it means it's not going to be able to hurt you. But if I have the zombies, I'm going to turn here for a moment before I give my example. If I have my zombies, for example, perpendicular to the way I'm facing, and I hit this one in the middle, the other ones are just going to go right past it and they're going to grab me and I'm going to have a bad time. Um... Another thing is generally when you're actually going to, to commit to your swings, I'm almost always stepping back away from the zombie as I'm swinging, so I'm kind of like swinging and stepping back. And that way if I miss my swing, I'm already inching away from the zombie, so when it goes to do its grab, I have a really good chance of stepping out of range before it can finish its grab. Just because the zombie starts its grab animation, you can still completely get out of it so long as you're quick enough. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Nimble is your best stat for combat is um that's how fast you move when your weapon's up uh but if i were to give you one piece of advice more than anything else in this game it's slow down you'll notice i almost never run in the game the only time i run is if i'm being intercepted by a zombie i will run two three four five steps whatever it takes to just get out of that intercept and then i stop running uh stamina or i think it's actually technically endurance um, that's what leads to, if you run too low on it, you read to Exertion. Exertion is not a minor penalty in combat. You're talking moderate exertion is a 20 to 30% damage reduction you do to zombies. On top of it, it makes you walk slower and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Which means, if I'm fighting zombies and I dip into Exertion, now I'm having to hit the zombies for every three, well, probably like every two hits I put on a zombie, I'm going to have to hit one additional time just to kill it. And that just means I'm getting myself to a higher level of exertion even faster, which is a harder z damage penalty. Oh yeah. And it's not that you can't run. Like, there are certainly people who are very successful in this game who run quite a bit. 
It's just you have to be very mindful of your endurance. Um, if you ever played games like Dark Souls and those kind of games where you do your endurance management where it's like, okay, you block, you, you, know, you block or dodge, you wait a second, then you attack, it's kind of the same idea as that, except you're not getting the rapid recovery. It is a very gradual recovery, so it's like, okay, I want to get in, I want to get a bunch of hit, like, I'm only going to get so much, so much out of my stamina in this period of time before I have to wait for it to recover. How do I want to invest that? Do I want to invest it carrying a bunch of junk? Do I want to invest it running? Do I want to invest it fighting the zombies? And you have to be very mindful of that. Uh, because once you get to, I believe it's um, high exertion, you can no longer run. Which means a lot of your... Because like, one of the things I'll do for running is I'll walk, I'll walk, I'll walk, I'll hop this fence, and I'll dash to the side just to get out of line of sight, and then I'll go back to walking. I can't do that anymore because I hop the fence and I have to walk slowly to the tree line and line of sight the zombies. So it is, it is basically, it is a resource. You have to be mindful of it. I can be driving faster than this. Because that's, that's usually the biggest mistake I see new players make, is you'll see them like run from house to house to house and they get to their third house and they run to a zombie and they're already at like high exertion. And then they're like, why, why do I suck so bad at fighting? And it's because they're taking like a 50% damage penalty because they're at high exertion. I actually have no idea what the damage penalty for high exertion. It's got to be a lot. And then on top of that, you know, they'll be wearing 10 layers of clothing. So their character is like sunstruck because they're like super overheated from all the running around in this. Like, you know, it's 80 degrees outside and they're running full on speed wearing, you know, a leather jacket, a sweater and everything. And so then they go into the fight and they're just, their character is basically struggling to breathe. And they're like, why do I suck at fighting? It's like, well, I mean, their character's all hot and sweaty. They're tired. All that stuff. But yeah, so that's, that's what a slowdown thing is. And a lot of it is like, right when you start the game, it's learning to, to fight the zombies. And there's not really a super fast way of learning to fight the zombies. Like, you just kind of have to adjust the way the game works. And so what I was saying is, like, say I'm fighting a zombie. Usually I'm fighting like this. Where I'm kind of doing this number. Once I get enough nimble. And if I don't have enough nimble, I'm kind of going like this. And then when they get close, you push. And then you turn and run. And then you go back to that. You don't always have to turn and run. I do it as a safety thing. So you're kind of doing that rhythm. But as you get more and more nimble, you can get away with much, a lot more. Like, I'm at nimble 5 at this point. And I can generally never turn around because I'm moving at just about the same speed as the zombies move while I'm in combat stance. They are technically slightly faster than me. But it's one of those things that they'll almost never catch up if I'm not swinging. Because you'll notice when... When you're nimbling, you'll notice I'll have like a brief hesitation when I'm stabbing. So that is slowing me down slightly. So there are times where it's just the answer is to just not swing and keep backing up. And the heavier my weapon, usually the more significant the slowdown. So if I had, for example, a, one of the big red axes, you swing it and then you wait like almost half a second before you start really get moving back again. And that's fine, it's just you need to be aware of that that issue of the weapon you're using. It's one of the reasons why, like, for the record, the Red Axe is a very solid and useful weapon. It is very good. So I'm not I'm not suggesting, you know, it's bad or not to use it or anything like that. But yeah. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say, is there's just there's no there's no shortcut to that part. Learning, learning to deal with isometric vision is just a thing you do. Oh, another thing with that aim outline I mentioned. So you'll notice, standing behind this vehicle, you can't see me. Like, I mean, you can see my head, but like, really, I am hard to see, and there's no indication I'm here. Uh, there can be a zombie standing right there, and because the zombies slouch a little bit, that zombie is totally invisible to you. So your character in real life would be like, oh crap, there's a zombie four feet away from me, all that. But, you know, 
me, the player, looking at this from isometric, I could be blissfully aware. Now, if I'm walking with my weapon ready, and that zombie's here, you'll see the giant green outline cover this whole area. I'll know there's a zombie there. And this character's actually had two really close calls with that exact problem, where there's a zombie obscured, where I, as a player, could not see the zombie, but the character in real life would be like, oh crap, there's a zombie right there. You know, there's no way you would miss it kind of situation. I'm going to take all these axes out of the car, because we're just collecting too many of them. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say is, like, axes are one of the favorite weapons in the game, because with any level of axe skill, you will one-shot a lot of zombies. Axes, for me personally, are my least favorite weapon in the game, because the amount of stamina they cost to do that is very high. And I generally go for builds that are very low strength and fitness. I go do, do a build I refer to as Zero to Hero. Um, and before I explain the build, the first thing I'm going to tell you is it is not a good build. It is objectively a bad build. Uh, it is not a build I recommend following. It's not a bad build for new... It's like it's not just like it's a bad build for new players. It's not just a bad build for veteran players. It is just, by any measure, a bad build. So... That, that, is, that is the preface, but I do a build that I start with zero strength, zero fitness, zero combat skills, zero any of it. Oh no, I'm going to need to make another shelf, aren't I? Alright, well, the two-handed weapons are now going to be moving on to another shelf, so this is that one? Okay. Just moving everything along. And I move the flashlight over there. That way I know that's where this stuff goes. Uh, we'll put the axis here. And I'll place the last axe on it because I generally don't care. Where can you find an axe? You've never found them before. All right, so there's two places you'll commonly find axes. Um, one is there are fire departments in the game. You'll find the axes in there. And two, in the backs of zombies, where someone else was kind enough to deposit said axe, and then the zombie was kind enough to deliver it directly to you. Um, a lot of weapons like these machetes, the axes, lead pipes, metal bars, uh, katanas, all those things, you can find them in zombies. Some of them you can find other places, but zombies is usually a safe bet. Alright, this is more... Oh, right. Grapes are just good for hunger. Grape leaves, like, they have negligible nutritional value, but they're good for hunger. That's where those underwear went. I was like, I thought I accidentally picked up a pair of underwear, and I didn't see it. Underwear in this game serve no purpose. You, you wear them to feel pretty, but that's basically the only purpose. So, for those who aren't aware, I have a trash can here. Any trash can will do. You can put it in there, and you'll see a delete all button, and now it no longer exists in your world. Hoping to find a wood stove in Rosewood. Um, I don't know a place in Rosewood that has a wood stove, or even has it on the table to drop. That said, I don't go to Rosewood super often, so that could be me just not knowing Rosewood well. Alright, so what I want to do is we're still trying to gain weight, so we can grab whatever fish we can carry, we're going to chuck it all in our bag. And I'm going to cook it. That's... Oh, seriously? Like, all these fish are too big? Alright. Let's ditch the lead pipe. Uh, grill does the exact same thing. Yep. There's, like, efficiency differences between some of those. Um, don't ask me which ones are which, because honestly, I don't know. I'm gonna carry one spare nightstick at this point. This is the reason I'm not picking up any more nightsticks. Is I had 21 nightsticks just on that one shelf, and all four of those shelves have, like, 10, 20 nightsticks each. So, we're, we're beyond set on nightsticks. So give me some more fillets. 
Okay, that's more like it. Yeah. Yep, Quigo mentioned wood stoves can be found in Muldrow, uh, West Point, or west of West Point. You can find on the cabin in the woods in the middle of the map. Um, there's actually quite a few cabins in the woods that you can find them, but um, that's probably the easiest one to explain. Uh, you can also find them in the giant warehouses. Uh, there's one south of Louisville, and there's one south of Riverside. Now, those ones aren't guaranteed, but... There's a pretty good chance of finding them there. Like I've I've only had one or two times that I did not find one in there. Oops, I actually meant to light the fire. Okay. And we'll just watch to make sure we don't burn our food. In the meantime, I'm gonna turn off my microphone. I'm gonna put my desk and stand. Because I'm getting a little uncomfortable, so I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Do you need carpentry too? I, I know you I do you do absolutely need the hammer. I don't I don't remember needing carpentry too though. I can't think there's ever been a time I haven't been able to pick one up. Ah, from a box you don't. Fair enough. That's probably what I'm thinking. That's that's the reason I was asking versus going, no you don't. I was like, do I? I goes, I have returned to my house with grill and trickery, or guile and trickery, sorry, I can words, and it took the back road, got thermoplade, oh, thermoplade nerds, yep. Um, it's uh, West Point, there's, yeah, there's a lake with like, there's three or four real, like, real nice fancy houses over there. Um, if you look on the other side of that lake from the fancy houses, there's a cabin in the woods, and the cabin in the woods does have an antique stove. The good news is it's easy to grab and move and leave. The bad news is you have to walk the whole way, 